Hello everyone! Welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity 2. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you're to join me today here in the Knights of Nekataka. As we go into the Wild Mare, because we're probably gonna need to sleep because it's late. And uh, people outside don't really want to deal with us. Last episode we went into the Valiant Trading Company thingy over here. And uh, we s went through poo, so now we need to uh, to sleep. Blessing, blessings of Amira. Oh, okay. Let's go. So we need to sleep because it's, everything is just it stopped. We need to come here though because there's I think Remore or something. There's somebody that we need to fi uh, figure out, and we're getting experiences. We do it, so it's really nice. Uh, hello, everyone. Sounds good. Gintel over there? Okay, that's, his, I suppose, the barman. Very lively song, everybody's taking their seats. Okay, it's all good. There's a musician over there. That a guy playing the, ar the ar arpsichord. And, uh, that does not sound like a thing. That's not, that doesn't Do sound like that. Do you enjoy a coin, my friend? Can you lift a sword? Everything, yes. Ooh, look at that thing over there, what is this? Mm, no, I can't see that. Luca! My one solace from the tedious bureaucracy. The booze, I suppose. Aboko. Ado, my friend. I knew our paths would cross eventually. A valian shouts over the din of the wild mare to get your attention, turning a great many heads to study your exchange. He takes a hearty swig of his tankard. Uh... <laughs> I, I'll bet you say that to all of your clients, I say with a wink. Que? No, you mistake me. I am not one of the courtesans. Oh. No, well, well, that's not... I didn't mean that. Tell me, you are the one who sails that fine ship, Ak? Terrorize the docks with spirits, Ak? Yes. Leaning in close, he sips from the tankard and lolly suck, sucks moisture from his upper lip. Oh, he's, he's doing the thing, maybe, I don't know. Um, who's asking? I am Aboko, and I am positioned to offer... Ah... Uh... I have opportunities for thousand times I practice my speech. Mera, never did it go this poorly. Just tell me what you want. I am supposed to be in the business of giving bounties, but I know no one who hunts them. No one will unfurl their sail for my humble payments. But I must start from the bottom and work my way to the top, huh? Well, you, I suppose we'll get there someday. Agrasima, my friend. If you are ever lacking in drinking money, you know where to look. <laughs> you seem down on your luck, though. It is true that I have stumbled in my career path. Now that I have such an accomplished hunter, I can stand in the long shadow of your success. You... He, I haven't agreed to anything. It's not all bad. But the momentum of meeting new clients over drinks and in such... enchanting company. It drains the stamina, my friend. Hmm. What bounties do you have available? You... you will take the job? Yes. You will take the job? Yes. Agrasima. Something special for my first hunter, then. He drains a tankard and tucks it under his arm <laughs> to retrieve his sheaf of notes. Ah, I will start you on Meriel, the mad animancer. She tortures her victims with unspeakable treatments before casting what's left to Bereth's will. My contact saw her leaving Port Maje and heading west of Maje Island. Eh, she's dead already. Uh, she joins the Goddess of Death in the beyond. My first bounty to pay off. An exciting day for us both. And he passes you a small pouch of coin. I wonder how much he's gonna get for that. Maybe it's not much, but as I make more deals, more pyres will be available, Ak. More monies, yes. Uh, what bounties? Ah, I finally managed to land the rights to a bounty of value. You may not like it. There is a thirsty drake who roosts near an oasis northeast of Maja Island. An important site for refilling canteens. The local tribes call him Purakeo, after a sea dragon of legend. Even so, they have no love for this water thief. Hmm, okay. Uh, sure. Before I, I go, I had some questions. Agrasima, you have but to ask. Uh, n nothing. Bye. Okay, more, more. Last episode we got one, and now we have another one. Where in the blazes is that old man? No, oh, sh take it easy. Who no, wait a minute, that wasn't Shodi. Maybe it was the same voice actress. Uh, Ken? Who's Ken? I don't know who's Ken is. Hey, tell oh, sorry, I skipped, I pressed space, one pause. Because apparently you can talk to people while paused. 
Well, I'm doing that for from now on. <laughs> I did not know that. That's very good. So that way, world doesn't move on. Now, Jovial, he says, Hail and welcome to the Wild Mayor, friend. A jovial man at the bar grins and motions you closer. His arms are quartered with thick muscle and cross-hatched with scars. Now, what can I do for you? Um, I'm looking for some more intimate entertainment. Uh, maybe if I have a quest for that, or, or maybe later when I have a better ship, because I need to buy better stuff for the ship, and, um, and I suppose this is pricey. In the first game, it's actually quite pricey. I think it's, well, the most expensive entertainment person in um, the Salty Mast of 6,000 coppers. So, yeah, quite quite expensive. Show me what you have for sale. You see anything you like, you let me know. Will do. And, what is that? Private dance room. Oh. Oh, I see. That's a rest. Uh, plus one on casts with level one spells and all skills plus one. That's a very nice buff. That's very interesting that they went with that backstage storage room <laughs> for nothing. We pay nothing. Uh, we are going to need to sleep, but uh, not right now. What do we have over here? It's for retraining. No, it's for recruiting. We have people over here. Uh, but they are just normal people. They don't talk. Unless... No. They're crew members. That's right. This is, this is the people that we get. Normal people that don't talk. We make them. Uh, so that's actually pretty good. I need cannoneers. I need expert hands, to be honest. Uh, novice surgeon. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. I kinda need that. From the White Dead Wens. And he's ascetic. Like, he's hard and tough? Is that what it means? I don't... I'm not really sure what that is. I don't know the word, basically. I mean, I, I've seen it, but I just... Yeah. Um, and over here we have novice deckhand. So he's a novice deckhand and a, a surgeon, which is pretty good. So I can have him sort of switch positions in battle if I need to, to go do some surgeoning. Uh, and I have a cannoneer over here for Allied. She's really cute. I really like the portrait. Uh, and that face over there. Wait a minute. What's that mask over there? Is that from Tides of Numenera? I know this face. Hmm. No, I don't think it is. I think it's from Pillars. Um... From Pillars 1. So I'll get, get Carragher over here. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, I will go... Greedy is probably not a good thing. He's a cook. Uh, why would I want that? Oh, daily wages go up. Depending on how good they are. Makes sense. And Helmsman over here and a deckhand is grim and religious. Does that matter for anything? Hmm. I need cannoneers. So I'll go allied over here. And uh, I'll look at my ship uh, right there. So, we have you. What are you doing? So, if I put you... So, I have... So, let me see. So, you're doing deckhand work and cook? Is that what it is? Novice cook. So, if I put you over here, you, you become novice deckhand. And you are good at cook. And this is a navigator. Surgeon deckhand. Do you become a good unskilled navigator? Okay, I see how this works. So, that yeah, we need a bigger boat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you need to be resting. That's going to increase. But we need a surgeon in there. So, how do I... Is that... Is that oh, novice surgeon. Okay, so that's going to increase. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Uh, that's pretty good. And then we have a helmsman over here. Uh, we don't have anyone for that. And then we have you serving as a cannoneer. They're both novice cannoneers. And who do we have that is good at cannoneering? Uh, we have Cheetopek over here. Are you good at surgeoning? Novice surgeon. Can I see that? Can I right click? Can I see how good you are? Or is that marked by something else. Ah, look at that. That guy is a seasoned deckhand. So the symbols, the little things they show what you are. Okay, that's good. Cuz it's not it doesn't say it's so I, I didn't know what the symbols were. Thought that maybe just they were decent at it. They could do that. Uh so up here we have deckhands and you're good at deckhand and we don't have any expert cannoneers, so it doesn't matter for anything. Sounds good to me. Oh, look at that. It's Andre's song. Good stuff. Um sounds good to me. We're in a good situation here. 
I really like this song. It's really nice. Uh, okay, so, and what am I at? Just, I'm there. Okay, good stuff. Let's see about this uh, person that said something about must be here somewhere. Okay, I can take that. And that's some good stuff over there. Mm-hmm. Save the game just in case. And we have somebody back here. A dancer. I'm on break. I didn't mean... Whatever. Ooh! Dancer's outfit. Oh. Oh, we can dress that? That's nice. I want... I want that. Okay, I think I can actually get that. You go up there, and you're gonna do some stealthing. A light's foot and an heavy bullet, I cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. Oh, you got the tech. Oh, because there's... Because there's a... Yeah, get this. Uh, get everything. That works. It's pretty good at this. Pretty good at this. Oh, Khan, over there. Hi. Hello. Hello? A young woman lingers near the stage with a mug of ale clutched tight in her hands. Though she shows no interest in the dancers, the bags beneath her eyes speak to many long nights spent drinking in the tavern. She looks lazily about the room until her gaze alights on you with interest. Have you seen an old elf hanging around here lately? Dress is funny. Probably drunker than an eel in a barrel of mead. Mm, can't say I have, no. Andra's crushing void, I thought as much. She sighs heavily and pinches the bridge of her nose. Listen, the guy I'm looking for owes me a lot of money. 5,000 coppers. You help me find him, and I'll give you 20%. Who owes you money? The drunk old goat I was pestering you about, Oswald. Like the credulous fool I am, I gave him a loan and he ran off before paying me back. Okay, it's, sure, it's the deal. I can't thank you enough. No one's been willing to so much as tell me the date until you came along. The man I'm looking for, Oswald, was especially fond of one of the courtesans upstairs, Annalis. I... St uh, that's an interesting name. Maybe you can get more out of her than I can. Why did he... She refuses to speak to me, the snippy little cur. Hmm, have you tried being... N n no, I suppose. Uh, I've, I've got a few questions for you first. What do you want to know? Who are you? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. But hey, what the hell? <laughs> I'm one of the countless minor nobles that litter the Deerwooden countryside. You know Admeth Hadrat, hero of the War of Defiance? He's my great, great whatever. That's interesting. Yeah, Admeth Hadrat was the hero of the War of Defiance. I think he was the first duke of Deerwood. Uh, I think he didn't die at the War of Defiance, but he's definitely responsible for the liberation of Deerwood. Um... What's the problem with that, though? When people find out, they start doing weird shit. Calling me lady, opening doors for me, buying me drinks. Really, the title is a mockery. It means nothing to me. Well, <laughs> great, great. You don't have a title, right? Um, so what's your history with Oswald? I don't, I, this name sounds familiar, but I don't know. She groans theatrically, like she can't bear to recount the tale. Ah, oh, the man's a family friend. Has been for... Well, must be four generations now. The perk of being an elf, eh? What does... What does he owe you money for? She stares in, into the depths of her mug and sighs. It's my fault, really. I should have known better than to believe that damned old drunk knew what he was doing. The man's a wizard. You understand, and a tinkerer. He convinced himself and me he could, with enough luminous Adra, Create a device that would add years to one's life. Must have been a crock of shit. Because one day he up and ran without a word of explanation or apology. I thought I knew him better than that. Well, it's not your fault, really. He's the one that uh, that's at fault here. So, uh, I'll if I find him, I'll come back. Farewell. So, backstage, can I go? No. Well, I'll... Excuse me. I... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go through there. Just trying to get... Oh! Look at who that is. Trying to get all the fog of war. Captain Redora. You say I cannot down the rest? <laughs> Watch me, I Miko. A valiant sailor raises a tankard and arches her back to invite a torrent of ale down her expectant mouth. 
holding this pose with nothing to show for it. She taps the tankard's base and furrows her brow as its apparent emptiness. At its apparent emptiness. Her companion shakes his head and focuses his attention elsewhere. Madiko, it is no wonder I thirst. As she wipes her mouth with the back of her hand, her eyes widen and meet yours. Ado, why do you stare? Um... You don't seem to be having as much fun as the rest of the clientele here. Ah, uh, the fun ran dry with the coin. Ah. Uh. When the dancers see more than an empty purse, I will be a content radora. <laughs> content radora. I like. I like that for some reason. Okay, your next grog is on me, I suppose. A grassima. Even in the oasis, I am parched. I really like her sort of because <laughs> she drunk. Uh, she pockets the coin and glances past you. Uh, to the bar. If you grant wishes, there is a vacancy on my ship. Hmm. Yet another reminder that not every seaworthy vessel will be crewed up to the standards of the sorcerer. Huh. I suppose not. Um, yeah, as the captain of the Defiant, I'm already taken. Sientere, sere. Next time around the wheel, perhaps. So... Zamar sent me to collect your debt. Merla, and he hired muscle. Sientere, but you are too late to collect. She holds uh, she holds out her palms and flinches at the blow that she that doesn't come. A gang in the northern huh. alley stole every coin. I cannot hire a crew, much less repay Zamar. Well, Zamar is having some pirate trouble. Could this gang be connected? If they wanted Zamar to thirst for coin, ah, oh, it is possible. Botsos would regret it when I turn my cannons to their mast. She raises her empty mug as the vow is struck. Those are the cannons you'll be waiting for Zamar to cast you. Because I'll be seeing more holes in that plan than in any Principe masts, future or no. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what happened? Wizard lights drew me like a moth to the alley north of the wild mare. And the blow to the back of the head that followed, mare light hurt. Then a wolf sat on my chest while a group of thugs went through my pockets. Oh. A wolf? Ah, it growled like a thunderstorm and drooled on my uniform. Huh. Redora pats a stain on her shoulder. I stumbled back here and traded all I had left for the comforts of the mare. It might be that she has a concussion. Uh, I'm gonna heal her wound. Uh, cast a healing balm. Do I have that? Cast the healing balm? I have the healing balm, but can I cast? Oh, I guess I can. That's uh, Shodi can do all the things. She reflexively closes her eyes and sucks in breath as light from your fingers touches her scalp. Radora reaches behind her head, this time wearing a grin. Belfetto. The gods smile on you. She has a little bit more of a intelligible speech pattern there. No sooner does she say it than her own smile falters. Complanca, but now I am sober again. Well, <laughs> that's 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 why then. Um Sounds like my quarrel is with this gang, then. Farewell. When you got their leader, tell them Radora sent you. She raises her mug and winks. Yeah, well, I think that, that, was, that was a really good one. Paid her for the mug and then cured her drunkenness. Although, you know, people do get drunk on purpose. I suppose, I suppose she, she probably was trying to do that more than drowning her sorrows. Um, would you Ahoy. kindly... Please. More than my eyes be open. Mmm. This guy's... Mr. Dancer, would you please... Thank you. A light's foot and an heavy bullet, I cap. I'm trying to get you out of that guy's line of sight. I don't think it's gonna be possible. Let me see if I can move him. I hear you. Probably not. So, the cook over here. Hi. I've no time to entertain you, you says. I didn't, I didn't mean to. It's fine. Okay, so this guy's just gonna... Well, uh, oh, that's good. Okay, let's put you over there. Let's bring Seraphine in. And now he can do this. That guy doesn't see him. And I can just take whatever I want. And I don't even pay attention to what it is. So let's go to the upper floor. And uh, finish the Bloody Mare. Is it the Bloody Mare? It's not the Bloody Mare. They have another name for it, I'm pretty sure. 
Ooh. Found a secret. Oh. I found money in between the cushions. And Emir is over there. Hey, that mi that's mine. Ooh, that's not money. That's a belt. A charm belt. For stride and survival. It's good for you. I think he might have a belt already. He doesn't. Good. Hi. See something you like? Hmm. The dancer turns to greet you, a coy smile tugging at his, li his lips. He's short for an elf, but no less graceful for his lacking height. His long face and dark eyes lend him a solemn air, but any hint of gloom is chased away by the wash of color in his cheeks. Aloth, this is the last place I expected to see you. Have your interests changed so much since our time at Bragon Hill? The, I, I know nothing of this. Also, I... Do you recall this name? It's a fairly common name, although it starts with a knee, uh, for it to be a common name. Uh, but I don't remember if Aloth mentioned him. A green lights up Emir's face. He fidgets with his hair self-consciously, smoothing it down where it's been must. Mm, no, I still enjoy tile puzzles and deflecting personal questions. Anyway, what are you doing here? <laughs> he looks away as though he's trying to ignore Emir's eager gaze. I think he's trying to ignore something else. Uh, Adair points... because. Yeah, Adir is sort of rocking his his uh, his bare chest right there. Adair points af affably in approval. Why? Mm. Oh, yeah, this. What is it? Oh, lighthearted. I suppose. Seraphin strokes his bearded his braided beard beneath a quiet smirk and thoughtful. Shodi rubs a knuckle along the edge of her jaw. I don't understand what that is. I, I think that's all because they have that. But what does it each what does each thing of is that is a nice thing that Shodi is she getting to like Aloth better because of the joke he makes? I could ask the same of you. And he laughs lightly, a hand over his mouth. I make my own hours, meet fascinating people, and the coin's nothing to sneer at. Better than stuffy old books and unflattering robes. Is it? He casts a, cri casts a critical eye over Aloth's outfit. He opens his mouth to speak, but decides better of it. Uh, well, I introduce me to your handsome, handsome friend, Aloth. This is Emir, an old friend from my academy days. A pleasure to meet you. It's good to see you again, Aloth. Anyway, I should get back to it. Be well. He smiles warmly at Aloth, blush coloring the tips of his ears. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. That's, I suppose that's a nice skill to do for... A nice skill to have blush on cue for a courtesan. Uh, unless, of course, I don't know, makeup can all do it, um, I suppose. But, um, yeah, Aloth is also an elf, if you didn't know. It's not very easy to tell. It was lovely seeing you. And he catches himself looking panicked. Perhaps lovely is too strong a word. I meant pleasant. Uh, perfectly agreeable. He looks at you chagrined. I can see where I may have confused the poor fellow in our academy days. <laughs> oh my god. It was a right fierce labor getting the lad to finger any flesh that weren't covering his spelly books. Oh, Islamir. Islamir, I can't understand you. I'm sorry. It was a right fierce... So it was hard getting him... To finger any flesh that wasn't... Oh, wait a minute, Isilmir? Isilmir, what were you doing, Isilmir? Oh my god, Isilmir. Did you enjoy the show? There's more to see, if you're interested. I think I know what's going on. I think I know what's going on. No, I, I, I mean, I have a, I don't know what's going on. I have a suspicion of what's going on. So Isilmir uh, wanted to uh, get to know him um, a little bit better, and Aloth, he's he, he's not good with words. Although I don't know exact, I think he Aloth knows what Isilmir is doing and what she does. Not in the sense, of course, he knows when she kind of possesses him. He knows that, but uh, as Isilmir knows when Aloth is doing things. It's not like an ex it's like it's not like he loses his memory or something. The thing is, Aloth is bad with words, um, so it's like a double double thing. And if Isilmir was making advances, uh, and Aloth wasn't sort of explaining the situation, and uh, or maybe Aloth wasn't interested, I know I don't know. Um, tell me about yourself, Emir. I suppose I was raised in the Adir Empire. 
When I was young, I studied to be an arcane knight. After an incident at my school, I left the continent and wandered until I found myself in Nikataka. As you can see, I stayed. Okay, it's been a long while here then. What, what kind of incident was that, if you don't mind me asking? A handful of my fellow students got up to a bit of mischief that ended with several people dead. Hmm. His gaze lingers on the floor, the cushions, the tables, anywhere but your face. After a moment, he shrugs, offering no further explanation. Which kind of hints at him not feeling guilt out of that, but more feeling other things. Like, for example, grief, I don't know, but I don't know. Did you enjoy the show? There's more to see, if you're interested. I don't think... I suppose. I was raised in the Adir Empire. Oh, yeah, okay. When I was... So, uh, how'd you become a courtesan? Same as any of the courtesans here, I imagine. He brushes his hair back from his face with a sigh. His long-suffering smile says he's answered this question many times before. Huh. I showed an aptitude. I trained with a master. And when I was ready, I began accepting clients of my own. You're... You uh, you mean you accept clients of your own here? Don't you work for the house? Um, there has to be more story to, to your story than that. There is more to every story. Hmm. He cants his head on, to the side, inspecting you with narrowed eyes. But the rest of it belongs to me, and I don't care to share it. Hmm. Okay, how much for your time? Just gouging the prices here. Ah, the money-minded type. What? I've always found fiscal responsibility very attractive. My time will cost you 150 copper, friend. That's quite a, it's quite a cheap thing. I... Hmm. I probably want to ask Aloth, though. I don't know what's going on here. Never mind. Till later, then. I also don't know what he meant by the fiscally minded. Do people just come, oh, let's go... Uh, Rough it out back there or something, and then I'll we'll talk pay. Yeah. Uh, Aloth. I got time. Oh, sorry, it's a dear. Sorry, sorry. Aloth, same voice actress. I yes. Guess. Actor, voice actor. No, can't ask anything about that. Okay. Well, uh, suppose it's fine. What do we have over here? We have some things that I can Certainly. take. We have nobody around that wants to talk. We have Annalise over here. Yes, that is her name, indeed. But we are out of time. So, for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Pillars of Eternity 2. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.